Hello everyone, welcome to this worship. Thank you for joining us in this time of worship and for watching this vlog. And thank you to all the people who are watching all the other vlogs as well and videos on the Fenny Church's YouTube channel. And thank you for subscribing. That's you click the subscribe button in the top right hand corner. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, just boosts our presence on the internet as we carry on this time of worshipping together online for um, this time where some people are not able to physically come into the churches. Uh, so it is an important online community and we stay together in this way. Let us pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress and my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him, dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence, through the clouds, burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this day may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, and hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me by your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages, and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Bible reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 18, beginning to read at verse 9. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like, like this tax collector. 
I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In that parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, or sometimes called the Pharisee and the publican, a publican in the sense of owning a public house, but uh, the public duty of collecting taxes, uh, of course, for the Romans in Jesus' time, is one example among many. We heard it in those opening canticles of how um, it's not the puffed up and the proud and the people who, on the surface, seem to be living um, a righteous life that find favour with God, but rather people who make mistakes, realise they've made mistakes and kind of come clean about them and ask in humility for God's forgiveness and love and mercy. And it's part of um, the uh, picture that the, the Gospel presents that um, it's not um, kind of uh, doing, uh, following a set of rules and just following a, a kind of external list of do this and don't do that, that leads to the fullness of life that God is bringing in Jesus, but rather the whole person, um, good bits and bad bits, and all the, all the whole part of our personality to be brought uh, before God. Um, in um, our public life, we often find individuals, um, powerful people, mentioning no names of course, who um, seek to kind of divide and um, rather than to, to unite, but try to um, portray one whole group of people as, as kind of other and, and, and in some sense um, bad, whereas we ourselves, the, the, the groups with the, with the individuals addressing, are seen as the, the goodies, we are the, 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 the righteous. This, this politics of division is no trick and it, it um, works because it, it speaks to a, a kind of fear that we have of things that are different to ourselves. But behind it is um, the idea that kind of the world's divided up into us and them, or on a more subtle level, good and bad. And this was one of the um, ideas in the early church which was rejected as a heresy. It's really interesting studying the early church because you can see how lots of different ideas came about, but the ones that um, survived were the ones that are really truest to the picture that, that we have of Jesus in the gospel. So the ideas weren't set out at the time of the gospels, but we can see that how people that um, kind of started there but went off on a tangent in a different direction uh, were rejected. So these, these ancient heresies have a lot to teach us about what the, the true faith is that the church has held to and teaches still today. And one of those ideas was just that, that uh, the world is divided into an eternal struggle between good and bad. And that was called Manichaeism after a, a third century um, teacher called Mani uh, from, from what we now would call Iran. And, and quite literally, uh, Mani imagined that there were little particles of good dotted around and little particles of bad. He didn't know about science like we do. But the, literally the physical elements were fighting and us uh, being human, made up of physical elements, still had that, that struggle between good and bad within us. And we still see an echo in that, don't we, in some ways, where, you know, in, in some cartoons or films, you kind of have a good angel and a bad angel, and one side needs to be one thing or the other. Well, that idea of um, the reality of evil, uh, fighting against the, uh, kind of the physical presence of good, was, I think, rightly rejected by not only uh, the Christian church, but it found its way into Islam as well, and was rightly rejected in Islam. In both religions, regard Manichaeism as a heresy. But we still see it um, 
it, it, it's, it's ugly face really in the extremes of um, not just both those, those two religions but any kind of extremism where one sect uh, or group thinks that it has the answers and it is right and everyone else is bad. The idea um, that uh, we alone have the truth, the, difficult, the, the obvious problem is that, is that it leads to the position where you can say everyone else is wrong apart from thee and me and I'm not so sure about thee. You see, that uh, we end up only thinking of ourselves as being in the right. Rather, I think the church teaches the faith um, shown in those stories of Jesus that it's the whole person that, um, that, that strives towards God. So that tax collector wasn't exonerate. It wasn't saying, yes, he's doing good things in his work. He was still um, kind of collaborating with the Romans. And it's not saying that the Pharisee wasn't obeying all the laws and he did all those things. He gave money to the poor. And it was more like the attitude that they came with that the, the Pharisee just thought of himself as being totally right. Whereas the, uh, the tax collector, the publican, realised that he was doing bad things and brought those in confession to God. And so he became uh, uh, justified, it says, in, in the Gospels, because he himself um, was showing a whole person um, good bits and bad bits uh, as, as a whole human being. One of the ways we saw, we can see this uh, in our popular culture is uh, many different shows can, with people competing against one another. And the most visceral, I suppose, of those is The Apprentice, where uh, uh, people show a side of themselves that's not always attractive. Actually, it's interesting in the, the show that it comes on after The Apprentice, where they interview these people, they often come across as much more rounded, whole and gentle people. But sometimes, just sometimes, someone wins that show that's not uh, going out of the way to be, to just show them an aggressive, competitive, um, dog eat dog side but the Lord Sugar sees through all that and he sees the potential in, in someone who doesn't perhaps come across at first as uh, brash and loud and, and assertive but actually um, takes a more calm and a measured approach. Jesus teaches us and the church teaches us that it's when we bring that whole person before God in humility, in um, asking for God's help, um, looking for God's forgiveness and offering ourselves to rededicate ourselves to him and uh, not justify ourselves. Life isn't a struggle between good and bad, it's a way of finding our, way, our own way uh, through life that acknowledges that um, we are whole people and complex people and we come before God in humility and asking for God's mercy in our lives. Amen.
Let us pray in the joy of our Lord and his promises to us. Inspire, O Lord, your church with the presence of Jesus Christ, here as he was with his disciples. Draw us close to you and to one another in the celebration of our common life. Think, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we remember your great acts of mercy and love, we pray for our world, for our place in it, for freedom from slavery and injustice and oppression and all that holds people back from fullness of life which you offer to each one of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as you gave to your disciples a new commandment of love, give the spirit of love to all among whom we live. Let the healing power of our communion as your people spread beyond these walls, to in, spread out into all of your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy on us in the times that we do not live in the power of your love. Be with us when we feel ourselves to be without value or confidence. And be with all who look towards you and your promise of value and love in each and every life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Those looking after them at home or in hospital. We pray for peace and healing and wholeness in our own lives and in the lives of all whom we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have now passed through this world. Commend them to your love in the assurance of your promises to us. May the grace of our communion with you fortify us until we rest with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Lord, we pray that these, our prayers, may be united with the great prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you hold in your hearts this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much for sharing in this worship and this uh, video. Uh, please do keep uh, checking for new videos and new services on our YouTube channel, Fenny Churches. Also remember, if you are able, or those who are able to, uh, the churches are now um, open again for simple acts of worship um, at uh, Sunday mornings, 9.30 Emmanuel, 10.30 uh, St Francis, Wednesday, 10 a.m. St Francis, and Thursday, 7.30 p.m. at Emmanuel. And uh, on the Sunday, we record one of those uh, services and put that out uh, as soon as my wife I let me do that on the um, YouTube channel. So uh, thank you for watching and until the next vlog, take care and keep safe and God bless.